We all knew this was coming, even though we weren't ready. But there is no turning back now. Deku is crying as he realizes that his sensei All Might is about to sacrifice his own life to stop All for One. And even if All Might succeeds in that regard, Deku still has the overpowered and thoroughly insane Tomura Shigaraki to deal with. This was a painful and heartbreaking chapter and it's about to get a lot worse, so let's get into it. You guys know how this works, if you enjoy our MHA content and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like and comment right now for that YouTube algorithm. And if you want to help us awaken the full power of our quirk by hitting 2 million subscribers here on the channel, do me a big favor and subscribe right now. Subscribing on YouTube is completely free and we're so close to 2 million so every single subscription counts. Finally, this video will of course contain Boku no Hero manga spoilers, so please proceed with caution. You have been warned. In the previous chapter, Stain tried to help All Might defeat All for One, but the villain was able to deal with Stain very quickly. Honestly, it was too quickly, and after all that waiting for Stain to do something, this felt extremely anticlimactic for me personally. Stain basically got wrecked mere seconds after getting involved in the fight, and All Might also barely survived another fierce attack from All for One. In fact, all Might seemingly lost his right arm, he lost his ability to walk, and at the end of the chapter he was desperately crawling towards the villain. But to his credit, All Might still refused to give up and he still had a defiant smile on his face. Now, we learned in the new chapter that All Might didn't really lose his right arm, it just looked like that because of the angle of the panel and where it was cut off. So quick correction for my previous video, All Might still has both of his arms, but he is unable to stand on his own two legs. Meanwhile, All For One is now close enough to the UA to use that gloop warp quirk to reach Shigaraki. Things were looking extremely bad for All Might and for everyone else as it seemed like All For One was about to accomplish his goal within mere seconds. The latest chapter begins by showing images of Shoto and Ochako lying unconscious and bloody, but thankfully still alive. The police confirm that they've completed their missions by neutralizing the major villains Dabi and Toga. With Toga's defeat, all those twice clones that were infesting the floating UA finally disappear and the heroes aboard the UA, including Momo and Mei Hatsume, are extremely glad that the clones disappeared when they did. The clones were adding a lot of extra weight to the structure and this weight was contributing to the structure losing altitude. Now that all the clones are gone and the UA is a lot lighter, May believes that the structure should be able to float again. We then finally get a real glimpse of the epic battle between Deku and Shigaraki, a battle that is still raging near the UA, where Deku is trying to keep Shigaraki from using his quirk. Deku is also doing his best to keep Shigaraki away from the UA building and from his friends who are there, but Deku is about to have another major problem. As we saw at the end of the previous chapter, all for One is now close enough to interfere with the battle and he is planning to use that gross sludgy warping quirk known as Gloop Warp to help bring Shigaraki to him. He will then implant his copy of the All for One quirk factor into Shigaraki and he believes that this will be enough to complete his takeover of his new vessel. With the original All for One quirk factor alone, Shigaraki has been able to resist All for One's control. But if he also receives the copy of the quirk factor that All for One has been using up to this point, his resistance will be overwhelmed and he will submit to All for One's control. All Might tries to distract the villain by calling out to him and telling him that he's still alive, but All for One refuses to let himself be distracted again. He is determined to complete his plan before he deals with All Might once and for all. However, when All for One tries to bring Shigaraki to him and the black sludge begins to pour out of Shigaraki's mouth, Shigaraki forces his mouth closed and he successfully resists being teleported to All for One's location. Realizing that Shigaraki's willpower is simply too strong to be manipulated so easily, All for One comes to the conclusion that he will have to go to Shigaraki instead, but he won't go alone. All for One grabs the injured All Might by the leg and pulls him upside down through the air as he approaches the location of Deku's battle with Shigaraki. When Shigaraki sees that All for One has All Might, he mocks Deku, telling him that while he tries to save All Might, Shigaraki will just go and kill everyone at UA. Deku is practically overwhelmed by this extremely difficult situation. 
He is exhausted. He is at his limit. And he is terrified that his mentor and idol, All Might, is about to die right before his eyes. And yet he can't save him because he can't take his attention off of Shigaraki. As All Might's vestige begins to ominously fade away, Deku shouts All Might as tears finally begin to flow from his eyes. He didn't want to cry. All Might told him not to cry anymore. But Deku is Deku. He can't help it. And as the tears begin to flow, they look to be like powered up tears that are almost turning into some form of energy as they leave Deku's eyes. There it is, boys and girls. Our theory that Deku has had a secret crying quirk all along has finally been confirmed. Okay, not really. But if you want to have some fun down in the comments, comment how a crying quirk could work and how it could actually be overpowered. All Might then begins to remember the precious moments he had with Deku and how hard Deku worked to learn to use one for all and become a worthy successor to All Might. When they first met, Deku asked All Might if he could become a hero even without a quirk. And although he gave a more dismissive answer then, All Might now finally gives his full answer, his true answer. Of course you can become a hero without a quirk, he says to Deku. After all, you always do your best and never give up on your dream. I've never been able to give up on mine either. My dream of being the symbol of peace. And here, All Might is referring to both how early on in his life he still tried to be a hero and fight villains even before he had a quirk, and how now, later in life, he is still trying to be a hero and fight villains even after losing his quirk. All Might then proceeds to grab All For One by the neck using his left arm, the arm that is still wearing a gauntlet-esque support item, which was presumably part of his armor. This is kind of weird, because the last time we saw All Might in the previous chapter, we saw him crawling and using his left arm for support. And in that panel, his arm looked bare. There was no gauntlet there. I'm not sure if this is a mistake or if something happened in the meantime, but the point is that All Might still has a part of his armor left on his arm, and he is now using that arm to grip All For One's neck. As All Might looks directly at him and smiles, all for One remembers Nana Shimura and how his final battle against her ultimately went. It seems that just before Nana died, she told Gran Torino to get All Might away from there and save his life. So Nana sacrificed her life for her student so that he could live to fight another day. And unfortunately for all of us All Might fans, it looks like he is about to do something very similar for Deku. In fact, in her final moments, Nana had said to All For One, one day, All Might is going to defeat you because Toshinori is even crazier than you. Then in the present moment, All Knight says to All For One that if he dies one more time and is forced to regenerate, he will rewind himself into a kindergartner. This means that All For One will be too small to pose a threat to Deku and the others, so getting him to that point is the hero's goal. An instant later, All Might's gauntlet explodes. Essentially, it self-destructs. Presumably killing both All Might and All For One. Or at the very least, severely injuring both of them and almost certainly destroying All Might's arm completely. Yes, this could finally be it. This could be the death of All Might. All Might's final ultimate sacrifice for Deku and the next generation. So, is this finally it? The end of All Might? I mean, I really don't know how you can even have Toshinori survive this, unless we get into some clone shenanigans or something along those lines. If this explosion is strong enough to basically end All For One, then it has to also be strong enough to end a completely armorless and quirkless All Might. The only armor that can save All Might now is some serious plot armor. So what do you guys say? Is All Might now dead, like for good? Or is he just gonna be really, really injured? And if he is really injured, will he actually recover somehow? Like maybe Eri will arrive and heal him on time? Or will he just die in Deku's arms in a dramatic and heartbreaking way? I have to say I really liked how this chapter drew a parallel between Nana's sacrifice to save her successor All Might and All Might's sacrifice for his successor Deku. Nana said that Toshinori would be the one to defeat All For One and he already did it twice and he may be about to do it for the third time, and for the final time, with this explosion. But, as Nana said, Toshinori is crazier than All For One. 
So even though All For One would never lay down his own life to defeat the hero, All Might is clearly willing to make that ultimate sacrifice. So Nana's prediction about All Might being the one to defeat All For One did end up being true, but it might also come at the cost of All Might's life. So if this really is goodbye for All Might, how will this affect the raging battle between Deku and Shigaraki? Will Deku now get angry and become even stronger? Or will he be heartbroken and distracted, which will make him weaker? With Dabi, Toga and many other villains now defeated, and with All For One now seemingly about to be defeated as well, can Shigaraki really defeat Deku and all the remaining heroes alone? Or is this the beginning of the end for the villains? Don't forget to leave your feedback down in the comments below. If you're looking for an epic MHA video to watch next, don't ignore my video on what would happen if Deku became the main villain of the story, link on screen and in the description. If you enjoy my MHA content and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like right now. And if you want to help us hit that insane 2 million subscriber mark, do me a big favor and subscribe. Subscribing on YouTube is of course completely free and it helps me out a lot.